Let's continue our conversation on Stoicism, going over the Moral Letters by Seneca. And I wanted to talk to you about letter 8. And uh, I'm not going to read you the whole letter, because especially near the end, I don't think he's super relevant. But this builds a little bit on the letter that uh, we did last time, which was about avoiding crowds. Letter 8, from Seneca to Lucilius. Greetings. Are you then telling me to avoid the crowd, retire and content myself with private thoughts? What about those instructions of your school that bid us die in action? Well, do you think this is inaction that I'm urging upon you? Here is the reason I have hidden myself away and closed the doors, to benefit the greater number. Not one of my days is spent in leisure, and I claim a part of the nights for study. I have no time for sleep until it overcomes me. My eyes are exhausted and drooping with late hours, but I keep them to the task. I have withdrawn not only from society but from business, and especially from my own business. The work that I am doing is for posterity. It is they who can benefit from what I write. I am committing to the page some helpful admonitions, like the recipes for useful salves. I have found these effective on my own sores, which, even if not completely healed, have ceased to spread. The right path, which I myself discovered late in life when weary from wandering, I now point out to others. My cry is this. Avoid those things that please the many, the gifts that fortune brings. Be suspicious, be timid. Resist every good that comes by chance. It is by the allurements of hope that the fish is caught, the game snared. Do you think these are the blessings of fortune? They are traps. Any one of you who wants to live in safety must make every effort to shun those baited favors amidst which we, poor creatures, are deceived. We think we have hold of them, when in fact they have hold of us. That career of yours leads over a cliff. To leave such an exalted life, you have to fall. And once prosperity begins to push us over, we cannot even resist. We, w we could wish to fall only once, or at least to fall from an upright position, but we are not allowed. Fortune does not only overturn us, it yepends us, and it smashes us. Hold therefore to this sound and saving rule of life. Indulge the body only to the extent that suffices for health. Deal sternly with it, lest it fail to obey the mind. Let food be for appeasing hunger, drink for satisfying thirst, clothing a protection against cold, a house a shelter against inclement weather. Whether that house is built of sod or of variegated marble from foreign lands is of no significance. Believe me, a person can be sheltered just as well with thatch as with gold. Scorn all those things that superfluous labor sets up for decoration and for show. Keep in mind that nothing but the mind is marvelous, that to the great mind nothing else is great. If I am saying all this to myself and to posterity, do you not think that I am doing more than to benefit them than I used to when I was an advocate, going down to post bail or affixing a seal to someone's will or lending my voice and aid to some senatorial candidate? Believe me, those who appear to be doing nothing are doing greater things. They are dealing with matters both human and divine. But now... I must make an end, and as has become my custom, I must pay for my letter. This will be done, but not in my own charge. I am still plundering Epicurus, in whose work I today found this saying. You should become a slave to philosophy, so that you may attain true liberty. And he goes into detail as to why he is quoting Epicurus, who is, as a leader of the Epicureans, pretty much the polar opposite of what the Stoics are all about. And I don't think that's particularly relevant for us today. When I was reading this letter, I, I was thinking of a couple of things. I recently read um, an interview with an author who said uh, she was taught by her uh, mentor that fame, especially legacy, is something that's not for you. And... Um, it was not an interview I read. I was listening. It was a podcast. It was a podcast from Ryan Holiday where he was talking to an artist. Sorry, sorry. Um, source attribution error in memory. Okay, so basically the artist's statement was something like her mentor had taught her legacy is not something you do for you. And I thought it was a very interesting thought because a lot of people are concerned about their legacy 
I myself, be honest, I, I, I've thought about that. What If I suddenly die, if tomorrow a ballpoint user comes and stabs me in the throat with a pen and I die, right? That could happen. I mean, it could happen. I'm, look, look at me. And, and the fountain pen reviews. Um, what, what would my legacy be? And her point was, it doesn't matter because you're dead. And I thought it was an outstanding way to look at things. It doesn't matter because you are dead. Now, does that mean that you should go around and pillage and plunder and do all those things? No, of course not. If you want to be a Stoic, you still have wisdom and justice and courage and, and uh, temperance. Those are the four cardinal virtues. You still have to stick to those. That is most important. Sola sublimis et excelsa virtus est, as Seneca wrote. Only virtue is sublime and lofty. Other things don't matter. At least not as much, because at best they are preferred indifference. And we know, if you've seen the other videos, you know what that means. You might prefer them to be in your life, but the reality is they're indifferent to virtue. So anyway, your legacy will not be for you. It'll be for those people who survive you. And again, I think you should still do everything you can to lead a good life. Not just as a Stoic, but I mean in general. It would be really nice if everyone would do everything they could to lead a good life and to be good to others. But it's interesting what Seneca is saying here. He's saying, I am studying every day and night because I want to leave this legacy, not just for myself, but for posterity. Well, that's really great. But you don't know how that legacy will be received, right? You don't know if, I mean, he says that what he's writing will be useful to others. Well, given that we're going over this book, it clearly was. But what if it was not? What if you put a lot of time and effort into creating a legacy and then the people that you leave behind do not care at all? And it reminded me, it reminded me of the quote with which he, one of the quotes with which he ended his last letter, and I read it at that point. Um, also well spoken is the remark of whoever it was, for there is some dispute as to the author, who said, when asked why he expended such efforts over a work of art that very few would ever see, a few are enough. One is enough. Not even one is also enough. I think that when you, within reason, stop caring about the opinions of others, you will feel a sense of liberation. Now, as said, within reason. I am not saying if someone annoys you, you should punch them straight in the face and then walk out because you don't care about their opinion. That is obviously not what you should be doing. That's also not virtuous. But when you are able to do the things that you do for you, and you don't mind so much what other people think of how you're doing things, I think that can help. And again, to put that in context, there are people I have spoken to who, with whom I've had interesting discussions about, um, I'll, I'll put this bluntly, but about how Stoicism is wrong, and that it's completely useless, it's not useful in everyday life, etc. Well, I have done almost 150 videos on this now, so clearly my opinion is different. But if you can have that discussion, and at the end of the discussion say, well, you know, these are interesting arguments, but at the end of the day, I'm doing what I'm doing for me, and this is helping me, and in that process, I think you understand what I'm trying to say, but in that process I'm not harming other people, then who cares what the other people think? I'm doing this because I want to do this, because it's making me a better person, and I genuinely believe applying Stoic principles to everyday life has made me in many ways a better person. But I don't do that because I want to leave a legacy of, on my tombstone is going to say, Stephen Brown, the Stoic. Right? Like I, I, I don't, I don't need to have that that recognition. And I think it's an important thing to think about once in a while. Why do you do the things you do? 
if you we've we've had a similar discussion when we were going over Marcus Aurelius that I, I remember. But if you do things, give to charity or help other people because you want to get recognition, then you then, then you're not being sincere, right? Then you're just doing that for the recognition and maybe for the legacy. And I think that's the incorrect approach. That's not why you should be doing certain things. Now it's always difficult this discussion because I I I work in a, a type of service profession. I, I I I teach psychology for a living. So the difficulty for me in this discussion is I can also not say the opinion of the people in my life, many students that I interact with on a pretty much daily basis. I would be remiss if I would say, well, their opinion doesn't matter. Their opinion of me doesn't matter. Because if I don't explain, uh, take something, long-term potentiation well, and they say, you explain that in an incoherent, incomprehensible manner. I don't have a clue what you're talking about. And then I say, well, that's not my problem because I don't care what you think. Then obviously I am wrong and I am remiss, right? So what I'm also trying to say is there are certain things, there are certain situations in which you do have to care about what other people tell you, right? Uh, I, will always, I will never forget once being in a lab meeting where I was working on my PhD and there was a um, professor who shall remain nameless but who uttered the quote, student evaluation should just be ignored because these people don't know what they're talking about anyway. Well, I disagree with that with every fiber of my being. They are the people that you are teaching, right? And should you take student evaluations with a grain of salt? Sure, because some students have it in for you because they didn't get the grade they wanted or your personalities just don't match or your teaching style does not appeal to them, right? Of course, and you have to learn to deal with that. Hashtag YouTube comments. Um, but everything within reason, if you can listen to people, And ask yourself, of this thing, and this again uh, comes back to other Stoic uh, authors that we talked about. I want to say this was Epictetus, but it could have been Marcus Aurelius. Anyway, uh, sorry, one of the two, another source attribution error, um, who's, who wrote this, right? If someone gives you feedback, I think it was, I want to say it was Epictetus, Ask yourself, are they right? If they are right, then don't be upset because you know they're right. If they are wrong, then don't be upset because you know they're wrong. And they can uh, call you terrible names, but you know they're wrong because they don't have any valid arguments. When you can do that, when you can let go within reason the opinions of others, the opinions that don't affect you, right? Within reason. I think you'll find your life easier and at the same time also listen to whether what others say makes sense. If feedback is given and it is sensible, what can you do? When a lot of people told me the volume of my videos was too low, I knew there was something was up, right? And initially I thought, well, it must be an aberration, it must be one person, but several people. Well, it would be weird for me to say, well, it's on your end, right? And I think I figured it out now. Anyway. <laughs> Let me know how the volume is in this video. Um, these were some of the thoughts I had, right? Learn to not care so much. Devote yourself to what you are doing. And I think what Seneca says makes a lot of sense. Study hard. Something like Stoicism is something that requires continuous work. Every day you have to work on it. That's how that stuff operates. If you do not do that, you will not progress. And if you don't progress, sorry, um, you'll stagnate. So study hard, learn when to care and when not to care. And in doing so, if you apply that properly, I think your life will be easier. I hope this was useful. Let me know what your thoughts on this letter are. I'll return next week with more talk about stoicism. Thank you for watching. Bye.